Now let's look at our final t-test, an independent measures t-test, a situation where we're measuring separate groups of individuals and comparing the means of those separate groups. We'll actually work with the same context, in this case, a two-group blood pressure example, where we have two separate groups of individuals, one group taking the placebo and the other group taking the actual drug. Let's actually look at this experimental design in more detail. In this case, we'll have a population and, by way of random assignment, we'll form two groups, sample 1 with n sub 1 individuals and sample 2 with n sub 2 individuals. Notice that we have to add subscripts to keep straight what sample we're talking about. So for everything we obtain going forward, we'll have subscripts referring to sample 1 and sample 2. For now, let's assume sample 1 is the placebo and sample 2 is our actual drug. After we've done this random assignment, each group will get a treatment. So sample 1 will get the placebo for 2 weeks and sample 2 will get the actual drug for 2 weeks. At the end of this, we'll end up with sample statistics for each of these samples. So we'll get a sample mean for group 1 and an estimated variance from group 1 and we'll get a sample mean from group 2 and an estimated variance from group 2. We'll talk a little bit later on how we'll use those two variance estimates optimally, but notice that our direct comparison here is between the mean for treatment 1 individuals and the mean from treatment 2 individuals. That, in essence, will capture the effect of the drug versus the placebo. Let's go back to the general form of the t-statistic and start filling in the actual values we'll use. In fact, we'll have duplicates of everything. We'll have a sample mean difference for the sample statistic, and we'll have a population mean difference for the population parameter, and then we'll have an estimated standard error of the mean difference for our denominator. We can start filling in these values. The sample mean difference, as we just saw, will be the difference between the sample mean for our first group minus the sample mean for the second group. That is, that will be our comparison that will identify the effect of drug. Now notice we don't actually have a population mean difference on any diagram I've shown you. Just like before, we're dealing here with the actual situation that we'll work with when we do science. But this is, like everything else, analogous to the actual situation that we wish we could run, or the actual situation we're trying to make an inference about. So let's look at that hypothetical. In this case, and this will be very hypothetical, we have a population that we're going to somehow duplicate. So we have mirrors of this population. One population will get treatment one, the placebo, and another population, the mirror of it, will get treatment two. So we're gonna end up with a population after treatment one and a population after treatment two. Those will each have population means, mu sub one for the population after the placebo and mu sub two for the population after the treatment. Next, to actually understand the characteristics of these populations, we'll imagine taking samples. This is where we get our n sub 1 and our n sub 2, which would yield the same sample statistics. Remember, this is hypothetical, but it's an analogous situation statistically. That is, we'll still be comparing the mean x sub 1 versus the mean x sub 2. And those will be giving us an estimate of mu sub 1 versus mu sub 2. So mu sub 1 versus mu sub 2 are the population means we're concerned with, and it's the difference of those population means that our sample statistics are actually capturing. So going back to our t-statistic for a two-mean difference, we can fill in that population mean difference. Now remember, we don't want to have to know population means before we do this study. That's again the purpose of changing around our methodology. In science, we simply can't work only with situations where we know population means. But remember that mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2 difference is assuming the null hypothesis is true. And if the null hypothesis is true, that means we're stating there's no effect of treatment. So going back to our diagram, if those treatment 1 and treatment 2s are identical, they do nothing to actually change the value of the mean, then mu sub 1 is equal to mu sub 2. Said differently, the difference between mu sub 1 and mu sub 2 is necessarily zero if the null hypothesis is true. So, going back to our t-statistic, we know, before doing this study, that we'll be testing our observed sample mean difference against a population mean difference of zero. 
So those terms, those parameters, completely drop out of our equation, and we're left with, in the numerator, just x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. Now the denominator here we'll have to spend a little bit of time later talking about, but note for now that this is the estimated standard error of that numerator. That is, over repeated samples, what types of differences between independent sample means are we likely to get? Now we'll talk about that and see it a little bit later, but for now, let's just give it its proper notation. That is S subscript X bar one minus X bar two, the standard error of the two mean difference. And this is our two sample or two mean difference T statistic, a T for X bar one minus X bar two. Now the denominator of this test statistic, the estimate of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean difference, can be calculated in two different ways. And so in jump, we're going to see two different varieties of this two mean difference t statistic. But let's step back and first talk about the characteristics we've seen of the independent samples t test. First, it's appropriate for independent samples or independent measures designs. These are situations where treatments are applied to completely separate groups of people, so no person experiences both treatments. We'll see later that we'll call these between subject designs. Now I mentioned there are two varieties of the independent samples t-test, and it comes down to how we think about that denominator. The two varieties are an equal variance assumed t-test. That is a situation where we assume the standard deviations of each of our groups represent the same population standard deviation, or an equal variance not assumed, a situation where we don't think the standard deviations of our two groups are really representing the same population standard deviation. Now I had this listed as the Barron's fisher problem, and we'll come back to what that actually means. But for now, notice that each of our samples provides a different estimate. That is, sample 1 has a variance estimate, S squared 1, and sample 2 has a different estimate, S squared 2. Now, it really comes down to whether we think our treatments will affect the standard deviations of those populations. That is, do we think treatment 1 and treatment 2 will change how spread out the population scores are? If we don't think the treatments could change the standard deviations, then that's when we'll use that equal variance assumed test. But if we think it's possible that the standard deviation of those populations could change due to our treatments, we'll have to use a different test. And that's where the Barron's fisher problem comes in. We'll come back to that later. For now, let's look at the simplified version, the one where we assume that our tests or our treatments are not changing the standard deviations of the populations. And that gives us this, the t statistic for two mean difference assuming equal variances. Now I have the degrees of freedom down there, and don't worry about those too much, we'll come back to degrees of freedom, but notice that each sample is contributing its size minus one. So the degrees of freedom for this test statistic is just the sample size for the first group minus one plus the sample size for the second group minus one.